what's the problem? Well, tonight I thought I'd talk about toxic masculinity, since everyone seems to be talking about toxic masculinity. And so, you know, I want to give the devil his due, because I, I, they always want to do that, you know. If, 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 if there's something up in the air, let's say, that you've got to assume there's a reason for it, and it's not like there's any shortage of, well, it, it's, it's the kind of phrase that really annoys me, uh, toxic masculinity. There's some, there's some self-righteousness to it. And I think the essential self-righteousness isn't the toxic part or that it's the masculinity part. It's that it's toxic masculinity in combination without any indication that it's toxic humanity that's really the problem. And so there's this one-sided element is toxic masculinity. It's like, well, th that's the whole story, r really, is it? It's... it's Half of the human race is the problem. And, 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 and they're just toxic, that's all. And, and, well, what about what they do that isn't toxic? Well, there's damn little of that, I can tell you. And, and then, well, what about femininity? It's like, well, that's not... If that's toxic, well, why don't we talk about that? Is there toxic femininity? I don't know, we don't seem to talk about it. Um, th there is, by the way. <laughs> um, there's, let's say, just as good gender, let's call ourselves good gender egalitarians. How about we do that? Then there's just as much toxic femininity. Now, maybe that's the part of the toxic... Uh, maybe that's the fault of the toxic males, you know, females being intrinsically perfect and only corrupted by, by masculine society. Well, there are theories of that sort, right? R Rousseau's theory, it's not precisely of that sort, is that human beings are basically good and that we're corrupted by society. And then if society is fundamentally a patriarchy and an oppressive one at that, then it's easy to derive the conclusion that the reason that we're corrupt, men and women, is because of the corruption of male-dominated society. And that, that theory, there's a technical word for a theory like that, I think it's stupid, I think is the technical <laughs> word for that. Now, obviously, we need to teach our boys to be obedient and respectful and kind, and they really do need to calm the hell down and be quiet sometimes. But boys also need to be boys, and I'm afraid they're rarely given that opportunity these days. They're always being told, no, stop, calm down, be quiet, sit still. We treat their boyhood like something that needs to be treated or fixed, like a malignant growth of some kind. We have literally made it into a mental illness. And why? Because we need them to fit into the systems that we have in place. We need them to go with the flow at our pace on our schedule. A boy's personality, his whole way of being, is an obstacle in our path. So we scold him, stifle him, drug him, subdue him until we make him compliant. Number three, masculinity is denigrated. Now, femininity is also attacked in our culture as well, of course, but nobody would ever call femininity itself toxic or fragile. Nobody talks about female privilege, even though females enjoy many unique privileges in this society. My wife, for example, has never gotten a speeding ticket, and it's not because she's never been pulled over, I can tell you that. <laughs> also, nobody would label all women dangerous or as, quote-unquote, potential monsters to be feared, which is what someone from the New York Times once said about men. In fact, guidelines from the American Psychological Association a few years ago a couple years ago, declared masculinity explicitly harmful. A post on the APA website explains, quote, in 2007, researchers found that the more men conformed to masculine norms, the more likely they were to consider as normal risky healthy behaviors, such as heavy drinking, using tobacco, and avoiding vegetables, and to engage in these risky behaviors themselves. 
Now, I confess, I was a little excited to see avoiding vegetables listed as a risky behavior. Because I've been feeling kind of old and lame recently, and um, now I don't have to go buy a motorcycle or join a bare-knuckle boxing league, because I take my life in my hands every time I pass by the salad bar at Ruby Tuesdays, I guess. Um, anyway, it says the, the quote-unquote main thrust of recent research, according to the article, is that traditionally masculine traits such as stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, and aggression are harmful. Among other things, we're told that all of these stoically aggressive men are reluctant to seek self-care, including psychological care. Now, I wonder, could it be that men are reluctant to consult psychologists in part because the psychological community has labeled all of us disordered? That is, after all, the crux of these guidelines. If stoicism, competitiveness, uh, aggression are on the whole harmful, as it says, then manhood itself is harmful. These traits are natural to men. Not every man has masculine traits to the same traits to the same degree, and perhaps some men hardly display them at all. Most of the men who work for CNN, for example. <laughs> but in uh, in general, men are more emotionally reserved, more aggressive, more competitive, and more physically dominant. It didn't become this way because society engineered it this way. It already was this way. It always has been this way. Society did not invent masculinity. Society noticed it and gave it a name. And that's why throughout history, societies across the world, even those who never came in contact with each other, had unknowingly come to certain near unanimous agreements about the role of men everywhere in the world. In most civilizations, men did things like hunt and fight wars and protect their homes and play violent games of various sorts. There were coming-of-age rituals across the world for boys that were focused on making sure the boy is tough and strong and self-sufficient and so on. And certain masculine traits like stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, aggression, were again in civilizations that had never come in contact with each other, encouraged and celebrated. Even when, you know, just as one example, when the Spanish and the Aztec civilizations met, two civilizations that had, until that point, never encountered each other, an ocean apart, a world apart, but still, a lot of these very basic notions of manhood were shared by the two. They manifested in different ways, such as with the Aztecs, you know, ripping out human hearts and so on. But um, I guess these days we'd call that toxic masculinity. But still, the basic, the basic ideas were there. The point here is that even from an anthropological perspective, it's evident that masculinity is not some arbitrary invention. It is ingrained. It is innate. About this the systemic breakdown of family start telling kids that boys can be girls and girls can be boys and and, and everything is subjective and everything is fluid you're not going to have kids that get up and 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 get you know raise up and become married and join a nuclear family set you're setting these kids up for failure so i've done a lot in terms of you know inviting people that were formerly trans onto my show to talk about their experiences and and what they're really saying to me is that it's child abuse you know and you're setting these people up for failure and you're, you know you're setting them up for failure so you see the left making a big push towards that right pick your gender no gender bathrooms that is an attack on the family you see feminism that's another self that i routinely attack the me too movement uh men can't you know two boys three-year-olds wrestling is wrong it's toxic masculinity all of these terms that really just mean being a man is wrong that is another attack on the family. Every single element, that's the one thing that connects everything the left does, is it's simply an attack on the family. So you're going to see that it's going to keep going up. You're saying the breakdown of family, it's going to keep going up until people start speaking up and rejecting this narrative. I mean, I don't have children yet, but I will be damned if my child goes to school and is told that they can pick their gender. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll go crazy. And where are the parents who are going crazy on this? When I speak to conservative parents, you know what they tell me? I just don't want to be that parent in school. I don't want my kid, you know, to be, you know, bullied, be worked really hard to get them into this private school, whatever it is. And they're allowing their, the, the schools to raise their kids in this regard, to tell them there's something wrong with the color of their skin, that they can pick their gender any day, that, you know, men are bad, that it's wrong to be a man. That is the problem with society. And I'll tell you this, there has never in the history of the world been a society that has survived without strong men. So that is the biggest threat to America right now. You know, the, the, 
I, you know, the only way I can really say it is the bitching of men, right? You know, this, this, this attack on testosterone, this attack on masculinity, this is a real problem. I, I can only imagine what Russians and Chinese people are thinking. They're just waiting, waiting. You think the boys that I see on college campus today could possibly end World War II? You think they could get, out, get over and, uh, and, and lay on the beaches of Normandy and world end, war, end World War II, the kids that are crying because Ben Shapiro's coming to speak on campus? Toxic masculinity, which is that's a hilarious expression because you need to thank toxic masculinity for all the bridges All the jets all the rockets all this toxic masculinity If you break down all the things that men have invented and all these toxic men have prevented Like you from being murdered in war and protected the country and all the all the different things that you could attribute to toxic masculinity most of it's positive <laughs> Toxic masculinity is a ridiculous thing to say. There's t there's terrible men. There's terrible human beings that happen to be men. There's also terrible human beings that happen to be women. There's not toxic femininity. They're just they just happen to be women women who developed in a terrible way, most likely with bad parents, most likely abuse, physical and or sexual, and then they become a monster at the end of all this process. This is the same with men. Bad men are just bad human beings that happen to be men. And when you see terrible things happen, it's not because of toxic masculinity. It's because of, it's a bad person. I believe in the individual. There's individuals, and some of them are bad, and some of them are good. But you want if you just want to generalize against all men, like you're, you're on an uphill road. There's too many, and obviously not me, I've never invented anything, but there's too many things that men have done that are positive. There's way too many. There's too many things. If you wanted to have like a, a scoreboard, and you wanted to compete men versus women. Why? What are you going to say when you look at all the different accomplishments that men have made? And obviously, it's not me, and it's not you. I'm not talking about us, like that we're on a team. But I'm right. saying, like, just this uh, this concept that men are bad. And you hear this a lot today, especially white men. I don't want to hear from white men. Okay, well, that's crazy because there's a lot of nice white men. Like, this is dumb. Phil you, Donahue. You, yeah, <laughs> he's one of them. But just, just this idea that you can generalize about one entire group, whether it's by gender or whether it's by race or by, by anything. But you can do that with white men. Hey there, Father Richard Conlon here. Just want to provide a quick recap and summary of what's been said by our four speakers so far and give you a new Catholic context to take this one step further. What's really happening here are two different visions of how we can look at humanity. Two different ways of seeing the human person and all the mess that is becoming so evident. On the one hand, we have a Christian vision. On the other hand, we have a secular vision. For a Christian vision, we can point to a specific event that caused toxic masculinity and also toxic femininity. It's called the fall, in which Adam and Eve, our first parents, were tricked by Satan into rebelling against God. As a result of this rebellion, original sin infected the human condition. And every single person has the capacity to become toxic. Under this Christian vision, we oppose Satan with perfect hatred for him alone. And all of humanity, we're called to show uttermost respect and love, even to loving our enemies. By direct contrast, a secular vision denies the fall. It denies original sin. It denies a personal, angelic, fallen human being. Satan. So what does the secular vision have to do as, as a response? It has to find some group to show that same hatred, some group to demonize, some group to say this is the problem that is causing us from not achieving our utopian ideal of perfect humanity here on earth. In World War II, for example, Hitler, who had the secular vision, demonized a specific group, the Jews. And throughout all of history, anyone who adopts a secular vision often demonizes a specific group. Today, we see the demonization of the masculine group, men, as though they are the problems of humanity and they are the ones that need to be eliminated. That's why Joe Rogan said that this toxic masculinity is a horrible generalization against a group of people. The truth is, there are just terrible persons instead. He's right on point. 
And that's why Jordan Peterson backs this up by saying that toxic masculinity is a self-righteous cover-up for the real problem, toxic humanity. Yes, every single person, as a result of this human condition, has the capacity to become toxic. That's why Matt Walsh is right on point when he's saying that toxic masculinity is a new created mental illness to fit us into a new cultural norm. That secular vision that's trying to understand the problem of evil and suffering and toxic humanity in this world. This is why Candace Owens said that toxic masculinity is the greatest threat to civilization today. So what's our response? G.K. Chesterton once famously responded to a London newspaper's request for essays on the question, what's wrong with the world? With a two word answer, I am. Yes, for Christians to take personal responsibility for the problems of this world, to look at our own hearts and the absolute conversion necessary to get out all that is toxic in our hearts, that is what the response is to the world. Mother Teresa affirmed this when someone said, Mother Teresa, what needs to change in this world? She said, you and me, that's what needs to change. May we be inspired by this exposure of toxic masculinity to look at what is toxic in our own hearts and to strive for the conversion that Jesus asks of each one of us.